Welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management, a weekly conversation with area leaders about how to persevere during uncertain times. Now here's your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, and welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times. And education is one of the things that is changing right now. Uh, went through COVID, we're now into a new, a new era of really education. One of those things that's going on is uh, the governor just has been in town this week, signed a bill that really put an affiliation agreement. It's something exciting for the future between Fort Hayes State, North Central Kansas Technical College, and the Northwest Kansas Technical College. And with me is the president of NCK Tech, Eric Burks. Eric, good to have you on our program today. Gary, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Exciting things because I don't know if you call it the next generation of education, Eric, but it's certainly going to be something moving forward to look at how we can address the needs of students, we being all of us in Northwest Kansas and Kansas in general. But what do people really need to know about this affiliation agreement? Well, I think, you know, what we've talked about publicly in several forums, but I think it's just one of those things you just keep hammering on because it really is this simple. It's about serving students better. It's about serving our communities better. And uh, we want to be able to provide what our communities and what our students need in this region so they don't have to look someplace else to, to get training and to, to get their education, that they can come to us and that we can help hopefully retain them in this area of the state. Because we know once they get out of this area, and not that we don't want people to go see and experience things, of course we do, but we know that uh, this, there's a great way of life here in this part of our state. Uh, it's a, a way of life that we want to preserve, but we need people to do that. And we have to have some people that decide to stick around, uh, start to be employed at our local businesses, maybe start businesses, um, you know, be involved on the school boards and the city councils and just engage in our communities. And, and we feel like we have a, a responsibility in helping make that happen. And I know that sounds like a lot for educational entities to do, Gary, but uh, we feel like we really have a strong hand in that. And the three of us partnering together can help make that happen. Well, Eric, I, this, this may have been something that would have been impossible a few years ago. What, what caused, what was the, the energy that went into this to say, hey, we can have presidents of three different educational systems in, in Kansas actually work together because there, there had to be a little magic in that formula. Well, yeah, and, and we've had a great partnership really with both of these entities, but especially since we're in Hayes, uh, you know, with our Hayes campus there with Fort Hayes State University, our, our students have been able to, through the Gateway program, since I've been here, and it, it occurred before I did, our students have lived in the dorms there at, at uh, Fort Hayes. They've done, uh, we've, we have our welding program already on Fort Hayes' campus. And so there's so much synergy already. So I wouldn't say that this was like a aha. It was just a kind of a natural progression uh, for us that just kind of went to that. But I do think that uh, kind of looking down the road and trying to be forward thinking as much as we can, and, and I, we all three think that we do that pretty well. We're just looking at the dynamics and the demographics of what we have going on in this part of the state. It's like we have a responsibility to work together to try to get the most bang out of the public's dollars. We all have some public uh, funding to us, and we want to make sure that we're serving our public better, and I think we can do that together. Uh, hopefully, we'll recognize, and I, I don't want to sell this as a cost effective, you know, it's going to save us a ton of money up front, because I think it'll probably cost us a little bit of money to start out with. But I think over the long haul, we will see some of those cost effective uh, solutions. And we'll just get to know each other better. And, and as it evolves, I think we'll just be able to serve people better, be able to be more efficient. And, and hopefully, like I said, be a be something our communities can be proud of. Cost effective is one thing student effective is even better. And I think we'll see that but somebody sitting, listening to this or watching this, what will they see? What will they see that is different that wasn't there before? Yeah, well, it's going to be a progression. I don't want to make anyone think this when this goes through. And by the way, the governor signing uh, the document, the bill uh, into law uh, is great. Um, that's just step one. We have still an agreement that three of us have to work out together to move through. We also have to get approval through the Higher Learning Commission. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because all of that's going to take some time. And so we're really looking at an August of 24 launch for this. And so you'll see us branded 
similarly. Uh, probably won't see as much trailblazer stuff around. Probably going to be tiger stuff uh, at all three entities. So the, the Mavericks out Northwest are going to become tigers, I believe, also. Again, we're working through some of these dynamics now, but that's what we're going to share that branding so that people do know that we're one entity. We are all on the same team internally and externally. We can serve their needs, whatever they need us to be. So business contacts one of us, they're contacting all of us. And so, uh, but we're, we're going to work together there. And uh, so I think that's what people see first is kind of the marketing piece. We've also got some uh, pilot programs that we're doing. We know that there are some specific uh, areas in which this needs to happen really quickly. Uh, nursing and, and healthcare is going to be one. Uh, construction is going to be another. Agriculture will be another. And so we're, we're working in those veins and those will be where we start first. And we've got teams working already together. And what I mean by that is we all have those programs already. But how can we make that so that if a student wants to start with us and they want to progress on through making that pathway as seamless as possible, hopefully someday to where maybe they even have to just fill out one application instead of having to do something separate for each of us. Again, I don't want to set the bar there yet, but that's where we want to get to is to try to break down those barriers so that students and communities are easily served by any of the entities involved. Talk about those teams. You mentioned some teams are working on putting the planning process. Are these working groups or what exactly are these teams that are working on this? Yeah, we've got teams. Uh, we've actually worked with a consultant through the very beginning of this. Uh, we we uh, got together, uh, Tisa, Ben and I, Dr. Mason and uh, President Shears and I got together and we, we were talking and we're like, we think that we want to do this, but we think we need somebody to help us through this process, especially where there's three. So we've worked with a consultant who's out of Maine, but he's our, our, our requirement was that they knew rule and they knew higher education. And he's got a lot of experience in both. And so he's been guiding us through a process. There's a governance team, which consists of the, the three CEOs of the entities. But then after that, there's a steering committee that's mostly a vice president level folks of all three entities that are working together to, to try to form this. And then each one of them serve on the committees. Like I mentioned, those three areas um, that uh, they're working in those groups uh, to try to help them through the process and come up with what are we going to do? Here's the goals. So the governance team is giving them goals and then they're trying to figure out how it's going to happen. We don't want to impose this on folks. We want them here. We're going to make this work, but you guys tell us how it's going to work and how, how we can do this together. And I think it's going to be a great process uh, for us. And I think the results are going to be great for our communities. What about accreditation? Are there challenges there to, to get accredita accreditation and that group all together? More of them than you think there should be, actually. Um, but uh, the, the main thing that our creditors are not going to say, we think this is a horrible idea or we think it's a great idea. They've made that very clear, but they are going to make sure that we're still in compliance, that we together meet the same compliance that we do individually. And that to me, it seems like uh, that wouldn't be that hard of a process, but there's actually quite a bit of uh, uh, of a process that we're engaged in with the Higher Learning Commission. We all are three, all three of us are uh, accredited by the Higher Learning Commission, which is headquartered out of Chicago. It's the same one that accredits all of the institutions in the state of Kansas. And so we're going through them and working through the process so that we will um, you know, be in compliance, make sure that everything is the way it needs to be and functioning. And they're, they're looking out for the interests of the of our citizens who are paying taxes to help support us and also of our students. So I appreciate the process that we're in, but it seems like if we're all individually accredited. It would make sense that we're going to comply, but we'll, we'll get there. And that's what we're working on right now. Now, you mentioned the August of 24, which is a little over a year from now, at least at the time we're recording this program. Um, are there are there benchmarks along the way that you want to achieve as students start coming back to school this fall? You know, I think it's just going to be making them aware and getting some excitement built about what that's going to look like. Of course, um, especially as our students will be changing, there's already been a lot of questions about what will my diploma say on it, you know, and just what that transition is going to look like. And so, again, we're just trying to help them understand and, and be prepared for that so that they can be excited about it and not nervous about it. So that's what I think the, the milestones. I don't know that I have certain like we're going to hit this, this, this and this. But that's the overall objective is to make sure that and I and I'm talking about students, but also internally with our own staff and employees, really helping them understand how this is going to impact them 
if at all. And in some cases, uh, it's going to be more aware of how, how we're going to better serve students, but a lot of it will be very much the same for how they've operated in the past. And that, that's what we want it to be as seamless as possible and yet uh, really open up the doors for opportunity. When you look at the, the bigger picture of this, it would appear, uh, at least from my standpoint, that there is this is a pretty good example of what maybe should happen in higher education, not only across Kansas, but across the country, if we're going to be efficient and, and help students get where they'd be. Do you have that feeling when you're working with the other two presidents that this is something special? Yeah, we think so. I mean, that we're we're following a model that's similar to what if you if you look down in Wichita, Wichita State uh, University and Wichita Tech or which WSU Tech, um, they did this. I don't know, maybe it's been six, seven years ago. I'm not sure exactly how long, Gary, but uh, and it's worked really well. That's a very urban, very different uh, environment than what we're operating in. And so we do feel like while there are similarities to that, so we're not necessarily completely a pioneer on this front. We also feel like doing this in a rural setting where there's so much mile, you know, so, so many miles that separate our campuses, that there's going to be some challenges and real opportunities that come from that distance. And so, uh, yeah, we do think that this is something for the, for higher education. There's there's uh, more and more colleges that are are shutting their doors or trimming back what they're doing. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition amongst uh, colleges for a. a, a a student population that's diminishing and not growing in many cases, especially here in Kansas. And so I think for us to work together to say, hey, we're not we're not adversaries here. We want the same thing. We want a better educated community. We want them to be prepared to help serve the businesses that are going to really help grow our area. And so how do we work together to do that? And I think if we can put down our you know protective guards up that we often have as as we look out for our own entities and start to look out for all of our entities and really the region i think that's going to be the key to making this happen eric that's a good way to end this part of our program because it it sums up really well what's going to be happening it's exciting moving forward as we'll be continuing to uh, talk about this over the next year as it develops and looks forward to uh, a year from now when we can kick off the new program and the affiliation between all three. Uh, I'd like to take a quick break here, come back and talk about what's happening at NCK Tech. We'll be back with Eric Burke, the president of NCK Tech, after this. The most successful investors are those that can keep their emotions in check and take a longer term view at what portfolios will be worth three to five years down the road. I'd say that's the most important in determining what investor outcomes are market corrections will continue in the future. We've seen many of them over the years, only to see equity prices rise higher, and that'll be the case in the future. Worth Wealth Management, enhancing lives and strengthening families. Welcome back to Forward Ever with our guest, Eric Burks, president of NCK Tech. We've been talking about the new affiliation agreement between Fort Hayes State, Northwest Kansas Tech, and NCK Tech. It's going to be exciting but I have to say, if, if you look what going on, what's going on at NCK Tech, that alone, there's excitement just on the campus at NCK Tech, both in Hayes and in Beloit. Yeah, no, we're we've got a lot of things going as we always do. Um, that's what in the middle of everything else that's going on, you know, we've got. Uh, new programs that we're adding. We've got a new program that uh, is launched last year in telecommunications, but it's growing. So it's creating um, some good challenges, but definitely some challenges in trying to make sure that we accommodate that. That's been a great partnership with Next Tech uh, to really, they've, they've provided us access to some um, equipment, access to a space that, like I said, we're outgrowing now. So we're trying to figure out how we might be able to relocate. Might be an opportunity, Gary, for us to work with the university on some things there too. Uh, but you know, that that's going to be huge for Next Tech, which is a huge employer in this area. And uh, um, so we're, we're really excited to help them. Hayes Med, we're working on a respiratory care program there. Um, that's we're just getting started on that, but we're excited that they'll be able to we'll be able to help them produce respiratory therapists. They'll be able to serve uh, Hayes Med and also the region. So that's one that's going on. We have a new power sports program uh, going up in, in Beloit, uh, which is going to be served the growing number of UTVs 
and also uh, watercraft and things like that as well. But really, um, just in UTVs alone, there's so much demand for people that know how to work on those things. And I was not aware of this, but I think uh, somebody told me the other day, the newest version of Can-Am, I'll just pick one, had, uh, I think they said 37 different computers on it, which we think of that with our cars, but we don't think of that with our four wheelers, you know, and things like that. But it's amazing the technology that's there. And so Tons of exciting things going on there, and I haven't even talked about the huge uh, building project that we're wanting to do to expand our capacity there in Hayes and uh, add on to, uh, it's about a $12 million project, $12.5 million project there. And so uh, tons of things going on, lots of uh, balls in the air that we're just trying to juggle the best we can, but uh, exciting times at NCK Tech. We're growing and we're excited about it. You know, Eric, one of the things I know that you see with students coming in, and whether it be Fort Hayes State, Northwest Kansas Tech, NCK Tech. You mentioned just the computers and, and the technology that goes into that. It used to be a day, you know, I thought, you know, I can change spark plugs in my car. Yeah. I'm not sure I could today. Uh, you look under the hood and you don't even know where they are. You can't see them. They're <laughs> right. underneath there somewhere. And the same thing goes for plumbing. It goes for uh, air conditioning. It goes for all those things. And finding the workforce to be able to do that. And I see the combination between what's going on with this affiliation between Fort Hayes State and, and, and what you guys are doing and Northwest Kansas Tech, how that can be so helpful to not only the local economy, but for the growth of our region. And you say growth, that's, that's hard to achieve in today's world. But yeah. to see growth in our region is going to take good people. And I see working together uh, with you and the universities to be able to make that happen is, is a big, big thing. Yeah, no, it, it's huge. And, and technical education is huge. I mean, it, you know, we forever have really pushed students towards. And as we talk about, we're, we're not adversaries, we're partners in this. But, you know, not every kid is destined for a four year degree. There's a lot of students out there that need a one year certificate, or a, a, maybe even a shorter term certificate or an associate's degree. And there are great jobs waiting for them at the end of that. And then the, the ability to progress on through later, uh, if that's what they choose to go pursue that bachelor's or master's degree or whatever it may be. And so that's what we're really trying to open up across the spectrum is opening people's eyes. I know uh, sometimes we, we talk about growing your grit at NCK Tech. And part of that's because you have to go against the grain a little bit, Gary, to get to us. Uh, there's a lot of people that push towards that four-year degree. I know my own father was pushing one of my sons. I finally got one of my kids to go to a tech college. He went to the wrong college. I, I'm not going to tell you where, but it wasn't <laughs> us. Uh, but anyway, uh, we didn't have the program he wanted. This is the main reason. But anyway, um, I just realized that how, how hard he had to go to get to us. And yet, the the job that he's going to have, he's going to outperform in salary and get a better return on investment than my oldest son who went to K-State and became an engineer. And so um, it's just amazing the opportunities that are there. If you like to work with your hands, if you like to be outdoors in some cases, not in all, you know, but just lots of opportunities and need. You know, when we look back to COVID and they talked about essential functions, essential careers, our people were still working. I mean, they're, they are essential to our world and to making all this work. We have more and more devices, you know, more and more things that we carry around. And we have to have a working electrical system to do that. We have to have working things in order to have our, our uh, houses comfortable. We like all these niceties, but we have to have our, our HVAC systems working and be able to do all that. And so that's what we're training people in. And you're right, the technology in that has changed tremendously over the years. Um, a lot of the same programs that we have, but the way they were taught 10 years ago is completely different than what they're learning and, and how it's being taught today. You know, one thing I do see of this is there may have used to been, or there was at one time a straight line where you went, graduated from high school, you went to four years, two years of school, et cetera. Now it could be you get a degree in one thing and then go back and continue to, to get more degrees. Uh, online learning, Fort Hayes State has such a good online learning program. <laughs> Combining that, uh, you know, people may have one job, but then they they want to go back and continue. And, and I see this affiliation and the quality of service that both you have and, and Northwest Kansas Tech and, and Fort Hayes State that really add up to be a win for our students here in Northwest and, and Kansas. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Our uh, All of us bring a different strength to the the partnership you know and, and and you know fort hayes certainly as you highlighted has a great online program and and we 
you know, a lot of our programs, if you think about learning technical skills, it's hard to do some of that through a computer online, but not impossible. And there's parts of it. Maybe it's going to be a hybrid where the classroom part, like what you and I are doing now, we can learn from each other being remote. We don't have to be in the same room. But then when you actually are going to put your hands on it and work with it, you're going to come in for some labs. Maybe that's on a weekend, maybe, you know, trying to work more with those students that maybe they're already working, but they want to upgrade their skills. So I think that there's just a ton of things that we can do. We're already in the online space some, but we want to get there in a larger way because I think we can pull more students into this area. And, and that's what Fort Hayes has been able to do with their online program. So that's an exciting thing. And working with business and industry is something that we've, we've done a lot of and really cater our programs towards meeting the needs of local business and industry. I think that's an area that we're going to be able to help uh, with the university and help you know, show them how we do that and, and see how that translates into their environment. Eric, our program talks about leading in challenging times. You guys are doing exactly that with this affiliation. Thanks for joining us on our program today. Gary, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. Thank you. And I encourage folks to reach out to us if they have questions or whatever. We want to hear their input on what they're excited about, what they're concerned about. So I, I say that at every function that we're at, but I wanted to make sure to mention that here too. Gary, thank you very much for all you do. Eric Burke, president of NCK Tech, has been our guest today on Forward Ever Leading in Challenging Times. It's brought to you by Worth Wealth Management, where you can live with confidence. I'm Gary Shorman. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us for Forward Ever Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management. Join us right here next week for another episode with host Gary Shorman. Until then, remember to move forward ever, backward never.